Hi, so this is the case of a girl called Crystal Beslanowitz. Okay, Crystal Beslanowitz grew up in Spokane, Wash, with her mother, Linda Torreson. She told the Deseret News in 1996 that her daughter was involved with drugs and was also prostituting by the age of age 15. Um, every time she came home, she had her arms spread out wide and a big smile on her face. Her mother said, I never refused her. I always loved her. And her mother said that whatever she was doing, her daughter, her daughter thought that it was more important than living a normal life. So her daughter was quite the wild girl. Right, Tourmaline? <laughs> okay. Miss Lenowich and her boyfriend, Chris, uh, Crystal and her boyfriend, had moved to Utah from Spokane just a few months earlier. He reported Her boyfriend reported her missing two days after she failed to return from a late night trip to Salt Lake convenience store. However, Crystal had fooled her boyfriend by telling him her name was really Tracy. So, so he knew her as Tracy. <laughs> he knew her as Tracy. So, here the story begins. Let's start from the beginning. On December 14, 1995, Tracy Beslanowicz left to pick up a snack at Circle K gas station outside Salt Lake City, Utah. When she returned, when she didn't return home, her boyfriend Chris was worried. Close to 11 p.m., Chris drove to Circle K. There wasn't any sign of Tracy. He also knocked on a few of the neighbors' doors. What he didn't do that night was contact the police, which later made him look more suspicious. The next morning, he was in, a ma in for a major shock. At 8.40 a.m., a farmer and his son spotted a body floating in the Utah River. It was a teen girl covered in wounds around her head and neck. Granite rocks nearby were flecked with blood. Crime scene technicians and the police scanned the scene. They found, <laughs> they found a pair of socks and that was it. She, was, she became a Jane Doe. Not for long, though. Investigators released a sketch of two of the girl's tattoos they found on her body to local news stations in an attempt to ID her. So, unfortunately for Chris, he recognized the tattoos. They were Tracy's. Chris called the police to confirm his suspicion and set off a string of phone calls. And Chris contacted the cops. They, in turn, called Tracy's father. They learned something extremely surprising. The Jane Doe wasn't Tracy. She was actually Crystal Beslanowicz, his stepdaughter. Crystal regularly borrowed her sister's identity for one reason or another. This time, she'd taken it to fool her boyfriend. The police thought Chris was lying about not knowing it was Crystal and made him their top suspect. This theory quickly fell, fell apart. Chris was financially dependent on Crystal and didn't even have access to a car. Another subject was Herb Fry. Another suspect was Herb Fry, a Utah driver, a Utah taxi driver. Herb was crushing hard on Crystal, and others claimed he was obsessed with her. Once again, this fell through. There wasn't anything material to tie him to the crime scene. In 2008, forensic scientists tested the blood flecked rocks for DNA. The female profile matched Crystal's. There was also a partial, a partial male profile, but it didn't match either Herb or Chris, so the police were completely out of suspects. Time marched on, as time does, and in 2013, Sorensen Forensics developed an innovative DNA extraction pro product called the Microbial Vac System. Interestingly, the MVAC didn't have a crime-solving based purpose initially. The invention was intended to remove bacteria and other contaminations from food products. That's a great idea, but researchers soon explored its other applications. So there was a new sheriff in town named Boner. He ordered a novel DNA collection method to help defrost this case, this cold case of crystal. The cutting edge for 
This cutting edge forensic tool called the MVAC system is manufactured and marketed by a Salt Lake City based company led by BYU graduate Jared V. Bradley. Bradley's DNA collection tool helped investigators uncover key evidence in a 20 year old cold case. Bradley's late father developed the wet vacuum sampling device to collect pathogens from food surfaces with the goal of improving food safety. Upon the advice of a friend, and after substantial testing in private laboratories, Bradley and his team repurposed it as a DNA collection tool for crime scenes and labs. They learned that a combination of a sterile spray and a vacuum pressure applied simultaneously to a surface greatly enhanced the amount of DNA that could be collected. In Beslanowicz's case, investigators had saved the murder weapon, and when they applied the MVAC onto the permeable stone, they were, un- they were able to collect sufficient material to generate a full DNA profile. Wow. Investigators then track their suspect to Florida. The team put the information into CODIS, a U.S.-based DNA collection database, and got a match. The man who left his DNA on the rocks in 1995 was Joseph Michael Simpson. Granted, investigators needed to confirm it was him before moving forward. So they flew to Florida, where Joseph resided, and collected a cigarette butt that Joseph threw on the ground. So this guy was a murderer and a litterer. Thanks to his carelessness, after 18 years, investigators finally had their murderer. It's unclear now how Crystal and Joseph were linked. Crystal's mother explained to Utah newspaper that her daughter was heavily involved in drugs and sex. She was a sex worker. Joseph may have been a past client, but all the matters... All that matters is that thanks to the MVAC and hardworking investigators, Crystal is getting justice. In September 2016, a jury convicted Joseph of beating Crystal to death. This wasn't the first time Joseph killed someone. Mr. Simpson <clears throat> stabbed a man multiple times and left him lying there with a knife still in his back. He then, and then when he got on, out on to parole, he took rocks to Crystal Beslanowicz's head until she was his second victim. So when he brutally bludgeoned Crystal, he was out on parole for a 1987 second degree felony murder. So basically, these kind of people are usually repeat offenders, and that's kind of scary. So um, he was convicted and sentenced to life without parole. Sadly, Crystal and Chris had only moved to Utah about five months earlier from Spokane, Washington. They'd hoped for a new peaceful life in Salt Lake City. But now all of Crystal's loved ones, all they had was memories. And that's the tragic case of Crystal Beslanowicz. It was a short case, but I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.